Why ancient African spiritual systems didn't have devils or evil, explained. In African spirituality, there were no devils or Satan. As spiritual science, there was only energy that was naturally polarized as opposites within creation. There was no room for a make-believe monster in African spiritual systems. Within the ancient Kemetic spiritual tradition, the soul as an energetic being of light is the true you. The true you incarnated to learn, raise its level of consciousness, and transmute negative physical experience into its polar opposite of positive energy. By doing this, the body will become a vessel in which it learned to trust the eternal soul. The result of the symbiotic relationship would produce a person that is at peace and balanced. The ancient Africans symbolically represented that idea of peace and balance as the sun between two mountains. It meant that when an individualized consciousness symbolizes double ma'at, reached an enlightened state of peaceful balance, it had climbed the mountain where the spirit of God and flesh meets. The enlightened soul could then sit on the throne as lord and master of the human condition. In that moment, the ancient African said that person becomes known as a Christ. In this context, the ancient Africans didn't develop ideas of evil entities so powerful that a humanized God couldn't control them. It was about the journey of the soul to turn negative energy into positive. These are the facts we'll explore in this video. Number one, etymology or the study of the origin of words is important to connect the dots and dispel the Christian errors and deceit. Number two, Satan, as a word, originally was defined closer to the ancient African spiritual science meaning before it came to mean the devil and evil. Number three, the original concept of the fallen angel, Lucifer, came from comedic science and was a positive expression of an abstract metaphysical concept. Only one early translation of the Bible equated Lucifer with Satan. Now, when you trace the journey of the soul through the African spiritual paradigm, you find that Christianity flipped spiritual concepts that were inherently positive to ones that provoked fear and anxiety in believers. By tracing the ancient metaphysical concepts of Horus, Jesus, and Lucifer through etymological origins and the original ancient spiritual teachings from Kemet, you'll find powerful and uplifting connections for humanity that can change the world for the better. With these ancient African symbolic metaphorical ideas of reaching and living life peaceful and balanced, we will take a deep dive into African spirituality and debunk Christian eras filled with powerful make-believe horned monsters known as the devil. You have nothing to fear. You are a god or goddess, and the entity known by the names of Satan, Lucifer, the devil, or El Diablo do not exist. They are all misapplications of African spiritual science. Because you are a god or goddess, there is nothing so powerful that you can't control it. You literally have the ability to create your life. That's what this ancient African knowledge is attempting to get across to those that study and apply it. Anyone can create consciously or allow the fear-based training programs from Christianity to control your life. I know from experience that negative Christian programming is a constant battle even years after dismissing the religion. Through the African spiritual science, I will connect the dots to expose Christianity in a way that you've never heard before. This will be a deep dive into African spirituality. I will be very detailed so that you can understand the connections and disconnect from any ideas of being powerless. Get your pen and paper ready to take some notes. So let's get to it. The development of Christianity over the centuries became a misrepresentation of ancient African spiritual concepts. It's time for us to delve deeper into these ancient African mythologies for the truth. It will be easy to see that Lucifer, Imhotep, and Jesus are all aspects of the comedic Egyptian concept of the migration of the soul from spirit into body, then its experience of life, and its exit at the death from the physical body. Now, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to my channel so that you may get future updates. Like and share this video with others so that they may gain this knowledge and raise their consciousness. Now, before we move forward, you have to understand the difference between a crucial concept of anthropomorphizing within African spiritual science and humanizing by the Greeks and Romans. 
Anthropomorphizing simply means using human characteristics or something in nature to symbolize an abstract metaphysical idea. Africans anthropomorphize metaphysical or spiritual concepts. Understand metaphysical and spiritual both simply express something not material or physical. When the Greeks and Romans copied the African netters or metaphysical functions of nature, they humanized them. Humanizing is when you take this metaphysical concept and you make it like a human. That's different from anthropomorphizing. Humanizing is at the foundation of religious belief systems today. You will see this as I break down Heru moving forward. In ancient African spiritual science, Heru or Horus, as he's known by the Greek Gnostics, is an expression of a multidimensional, natural, metaphysical function personified as a mythological personage. All comedic mythology at its foundation is numerology. The mythology is a way to explain how the functions of nature work. Heru as a function of nature is the ability to be created and return or be renewed into infinity. One way this abstract metaphysical idea was symbolized was as a child. Symbolically, a child is new when born. For the human race, any child born means that the human race will keep multiplying and existing. The ancient Africans represented this fundamental function of the creative universe as a trinity of man, woman, and child. They are anthropomorphic representations of the idea that the seed will be implanted in a womb to produce an offspring. This trinity concept is universal to all of creation. It means energy in the universe will forever be renewed. In modern times, we say the same thing with the law of energy conservation we learned in grade school. That law states that energy can never be destroyed. It can only change forms. Thinking of it in a metaphysical context means that energy will be transformed. Negative energy can be transmuted or changed into positive, but no energy is never destroyed or goes away. Africans personify but never humanize these functions as the Greeks and Romans did. The mythology was a very elegant way for the Africans to transmit these complex ideas. Because the Greeks and Romans humanized the African concepts is one reason we live with the idea of a God that is jealous, has favorites, will watch you masturbate, and then send you to hell for enjoying it. When anthropomorphizing, the ancient Africans might say, it's like God can see and know everything to express the omniscience of consciousness. It's using a human characteristic to give you an idea of what the omnipotence of consciousness is like. But in the Greek and Roman tradition, God is humanized with the idea that he is watching you and will punish you for doing wrong. In high school, we studied Greek gods who were said to have children by humans, producing half-human, half-god beings. Humanizing a god became the Christian tradition through the Greeks. Jesus was supposed to be God and man, for example. But the ancient Africans did no such thing. Africans before religion would say humanizing God is childlike thinking. There were no powerful forces or evil or devils in African spiritual systems, only energy that existed as polarized opposites. This is important to understand. Just like the idea of scientific method in modern times, the spiritual science of Kemet in ancient Africa was based on observation and experimentation. Religion is based on belief and superstition. As the great Stevie Wonder would say, when you believe in things you don't understand, you suffer. Superstition ain't the way. Now that you understand the difference between the African way of anthropomorphizing rather than humanizing, let's break down the ancient African spiritual science and illuminate the connections of Heru, Imhotep, Lucifer, and Jesus. Stay with me. It's not as preposterous as it might sound once the ancient science is understood. I'm going to break it down in a simplified, easy to understand way. So let's take a deeper dive and look at the comedic principle of Heru. It's a multidimensional concept on multiple levels and given names to denote different levels within the comedic framework. So here's how Heru, or Horus as the Greeks know him, as the principle of renewing or being constantly reborn is connected to the Christian Jesus etymologically with the name and functionally via nature and mythology. 
In the beginning of the universe, Yeusa is the ever coming son of God produced by Atum when he masturbated. See my video on Atum I did for more details. The son of God was Yeusa in the trinity of Atum and Yeusaeus at the beginning of creation. Etymologically, Jesus is a cognate of the word Yeusa. You see, the name Jesus didn't exist before the 15th century. That's when the letter J was invented as an embellishment of the letter I, like making an inverted Nike swoosh. See my video, African Spirituality, where did the name Jesus originate for more details on this. The letter I was pronounced back then with the ye sound. The Egyptian word Yeusa, meaning the ever coming son of God, became Yeshua in Hebrew and Yeusaeus in Greek and later Jesus in English with the hard J pronunciation. Again, Yeusa, Yeshua, and Yeusaeus is the universal function of the potential of the universe to be born and return again and again in African spirituality. That was, of course, before Christianity corporealized the idea of Yeusa or Jesus in the 4th century at the Council of Nicaea. Isn't Jesus supposed to return according to Christians? By connecting the ancient African science, now you can know why he's had the longest running orgasm in the history of mankind. Because he's been coming, uh, I, I mean, coming back for almost 2,000 years. Okay, that's a bad pun, but you get what I mean. Nevertheless, you uncover a Christian era through the African spiritual principle known as Jeusa through its linguistic connection. Truth is that Jesus is not coming back because he was never here. Now, Christians don't hate the player, hate the game being played. I can never understand why Christians want to watch my videos and try to convince me in the comments of how wrong I am. I've researched tons more information, have more documentation, and yet I'm wrong. Go figure. So let's keep going so we can make the rest of the connections of Satan and Lucifer. Let's look at the function of born, reborn, and renewal on the creation level in the African spiritual science. What I'm about to teach you here will be new and never before heard. So we have to go back to the beginning of the comedic creation myth to connect some dots here. We have to now consider how the ancient Africans taught was the state of the universe before the Big Bang. The ancient Egyptians called this state noon or the watery abyss and chaos in a state of infinity. For the ancient Africans, the universe before creation was symbolically inside the watery womb of the creator. That's a reference to the divine feminine aspect in case anyone was wondering. Inside the womb was dark and timeless. In this state, God did not know itself until the Big Bang occurred. At that moment, consciousness, known as universal ma'at, came into being. At that instance of awakening enlightenment from within, God was able to look on its face and experience itself. The unity of noon opened or separated, and the two ray came into existence. They were called the two ray because they are polarized opposites. To denote opposites, Africans would use certain letters to represent a certain function and reverse the same letters to express its opposite function. In this case, RH and HR became the representation of dark and light. This is where the epic mythological battle of Heru and Set began. They were both the two ray. Now, you must understand Set as its natural function to grasp the idea of how Set can battle Heru at the beginning of creation and be one of the two ray. This will also foreshadow a later connection. Set as a function of nature is opposition or separation. Remember, unity was the noon opened or separated. That is the same function but named ray at creation. As a function of nature, ray negated or opened or separated unity. Unity was no more. Ray is the same exact function as set, but more on an abstract universal level. Ancient Africans would change the names to give you a clue as to whether an idea was abstract and metaphysical or more specific to the physical. 
As the two ray, the abstract universal functions are about the opposites of light and dark at the beginning of creation. The dark, as in RH, would be in opposition to HR or Heru. On the human level, darkness was symbolically a metaphor for ignorance. When wisdom was gained, light was victorious over darkness. Heru was also the light that was victorious over darkness in the beginning of the universe. Notice the reversal of the letters RH and HR to show opposites. The letters became a symbol or metaphor to express polar opposites. From the ancient Egyptian function of the word Set came its Hebrew cognate Satan. Originally, Satan didn't mean evil or the devil. It simply meant adversary. In other words, someone or something that was in opposition or adversarial to you. The opponent or adversary would keep you away from God. Again, Satan is etymologically connected to the Egyptian word ST or set. The Greeks had the same concept as Satan. They called it diabolos, which means one who divides. We know that the di prefix means two. So el diablo didn't originally mean evil, only a separator. If we stick with the idea of the universal function of opposition or separating, then we can see the similarities in the original Hebrew and Greek words and their connection to the ancient African netter of Set. So how did Satan or the devil become represented with horns? Simple. Because Set was the function of separation, the natural representation for the function of separation and opposition for Set became the horns of a cow. Yep, they were following the natural horn symbol used by the Africans to represent opposites. So Satan grew horns. Do you get the idea that our minds were being toyed with? The truth was being hidden right under our noses, but we were given different meanings to keep us from ever getting to the truth. Hmm. So Heru, as one of the two ray at the beginning of the universe, is light that is in opposition to darkness. It's only a matter of perspective to choose whether light is in opposition to darkness or darkness in opposition to light. Hence, they could be interchangeable as the two ray. For the Africans, it was understood that polarized energy was necessary for anything to be experienced. They didn't define energy as good or evil, just opposites. When a person believes there is evil, it allows one to position themselves as a victim. But the ancient Africans understood that there were no victims. They would say that on your journey as an eternal soul, you incarnated to learn and grow through human experience and raise your level of consciousness. The difficulties caused by others in your life is an opportunity for you to learn how to transmute and change what you've defined as negative into something positive. Now, as a soul, you journey from unity through life experience and back to unity. This journey will take many incarnations and in many forms and many opportunities to gain understanding and wisdom from any lesson you might not have learned in a particular lifetime before. Whatever you don't learn in this life, you will get the opportunity to learn in another. You most likely will get the chance to hop on the other side of the line, so to speak, and get into the other person's shoes. If you were the bad guy in this life, you might get a chance to be the good guy in the next life. If you are a good guy or a good gal, then you might get a chance to be the bad guy or bad gal in the next life. That's one way reincarnation works. It's not about good or evil. It's about learning through experience. So now that you understand how Satan is connected to Set etymologically as a cognate and through the principle of opposites symbolized by Ray and Set in mythology, now we can move on to the next step. So let's look at how Imhotep is connected to Horus, Jesus, and later Lucifer. Our English word soul originates from the Latin word soul, which means sun. They sound just alike, don't they? See, we live on Earth in our solar system, orbiting the sun. The Latin word sol and the English word 
S-O-U-L, are homonyms. Again, a slight tweak to hide the knowledge in plain sight. Hmm. Anyway, symbolically, the ancients were saying that within each human being is a spark of light that's representative of the enlightened wisdom of the universe or creator within. Well, this idea connects us back to Heru on the journey of the soul or being light as a spark of God. Remember at the beginning of the universe when the light came on for God, so to speak, and it became aware of itself. Well, Ptah is how the ancient Egyptians represented the idea of light descending from heaven and being trapped in matter or the physical body. If the soul or light was trapped, what function of nature trapped the light? Set, of course, a.k.a. our good Christian buddy, Satan. As stated before, the Africans would represent the opposite idea of the light leaving matter by reversing the letters in a play on words, as in PTH becoming HTP, or better known as Hotep today. HTP or Hotep is the ancient African idea of the soul releasing from the body. For the ancient Africans, the light or soul would go to a peaceful place when released from the physical body. Hence, in modern times, Imhotep meaning in peace. Imhotep as the Prince of Peace is a nickname for Jesus as the Christ that originated in these teachings of ancient Kemet. That's one level. But through the etymology of the African science principles regarding the journey of the soul, you connect the words Imhotep and Jesus back to Heru as light. There's much more to this idea, but I'm just trying to keep this video as streamlined as possible, although I know it's already getting long. Now let's move to the last connection and we'll be complete. The idea of Lucifer as the fallen angel of God and thrown out of heaven. Lucifer, the fallen angel, became equated with Satan in the King James Version of the Bible in 1611. It's the only version at the time that did so. This was not the case originally. The idea of Lucifer originated within the Temple of Ptah in ancient Egypt where they taught about the spark of God descending from heaven and falling into matter. So this is not about me trying to get you converted over to Satanism, so just relax. When you understand the ideas as a function of nature rather than a story, they become pretty clear. Remember, the English word soul and the Latin word soul are homonyms. Also, the idea of Yeusa, Yeshua, or Jesus was part of the teaching at the Temple of Ptah. Lucifer was the name for the manifestation of light or a new soul descending from heaven into matter. Hence the biblical idea of Lucifer as a fallen angel. Heru or Horus as the Egyptian principle of perpetual renewal was given what amounted to a nickname Lucifer when it was a new soul descending into matter. Lucifer from the Latin root means bearer of light. La Luz still means light in Spanish today. So in ancient African spirituality, Lucifer is a new soul being born into the physical body trapped by the opposing force of Set. Understanding this idea and the origin of the symbolism, you can quickly connect the idea in the Bible scripture, Luke chapter 10, verse 18, where it says, Yes, he told them, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Understand the Bible is written in coded language to obscure the esoteric meaning. Christian Lucifer, as Satan, is connected to falling from heaven and lightning. As stated before, Lucifer is only connected to Satan in the King James Version of the Bible. It's truth hidden in plain sight again, right? Hmm. One of the reasons comedic spiritual science will be so important for humanity moving forward is that it's the specific ancient spiritual system that will uncover the errors and deceit of Christianity and help humanity rise above the fear of negativity to reach the mount and sit on the throne as the king of glory. Or er, sorry, that sounded a little something like a preacher, would you say? Huh? How many preachers are preaching that message with no idea of the truth underneath those words? 
speaking about a savior coming back. The ancient comedic natural function many of us know as a rue is represented by a newly grown plant sprout or a newborn lamb as in the lamb of God, a new vine, the netzer, or a new sunrise, which is the S-U-N of God that happens day after day. Each of them has in common that whatever they were born from has the ability to renew itself over and over. Through the ancient African principle of being born and or renewed into infinity, I connected how it's represented as different names and different aspects of the spiritual science. I've also touched on and exposed Christian errors and deceit. The different functions can represent the creation of the universe or the migration of the soul. These principles will have names specific to those aspects. So let's quickly recap. Yeusa or Jesus, is the ancient African theoretical concept that the universe will exist and be renewed indefinitely. Heru is the original universal light that is opposed to darkness. Re is the opposition to light at the beginning of creation. Imhotep is the light or spark of God exiting the physical body. Lucifer is the light bearer or spark of light descending from heaven into the physical body, not a devil or Satan. This is what you have to know about the ancient spiritual concepts that are being taught to you. The bearer of light as the spark of God within will lift you to the mount and have you sit on your throne wearing your shining crown of glory or enlightenment. That means you'll reach the mount when your darkness is illuminated from within by wisdom you gain from your life experiences. You are the Christ in potential, the new light shining from within. That's why there's no devils or evil within African spirituality. It's only your opposition. You're a god or goddess with the power to overcome any opposition. That's why Africans didn't believe in entities so powerful that God couldn't even control it. That's because you have all the power over your opposition. However, you may have to go through some tough times to gain the wisdom to overcome that opposition. Allow the eternal self to guide you to the mount. Thank you for watching. I'm Reginald Martin, founder of Comedic Centered Living. Please subscribe to my channel so that you may get my future updates. Like and share this video with others so that they may gain the knowledge and raise their consciousness. If you want more knowledge like this, please go to my website at www.comediccenteredliving.com. You will learn the African spiritual science and expose the hidden coded language of the Bible that would expose the truth about Christianity. Thank you.